Well, we know there was a lot to be desired with the M Plus. We were really excited to bring that one to the market with all the texturing that it had. Ended up with some uh, different opinions out in the marketplace on it. So kind of came back to the drawing board with it. I think that the M Plus really was kind of that driving factor, of, like any kind of artist that kind of throws out a new album that is like so different than anything else they've released. People go, whoa, what the fuck? Tried to bring an M to the market that was what we thought more people were looking for. We hit some things really well and a few others not as well as we'd like. This time around, taking those concepts, we learned quite a bit with that product. A lot in terms of the single hit extraction and the uh, the surface texturing that we've got going on with it. We heard you when you guys said, hey, the, the M plus, you know, the heat transfer is a little bit too much. All right, there's a few things that we can continue doing and evolve this thing a little bit. Let's see if we can't figure out a way to streamline the design of the M to make it actually more simple to manufacture without having to make compromises and ideally so that we can lower the cost of making the M. Become more efficient both with machine time and assembly and all that stuff. This time we wanted to put a huge focus on lowering the cost to the consumer. How many companies are actually lowering their prices? Come together as a big group every single Thursday and talk about what we want, what we don't want, and how we can proceed with the actual product. The Thursday product meeting is more of an in-depth meeting directly with our engineers, George, Jason, our test engineers, uh, Troy and, and, and Austin as well. So we really get a detailed kind of feedback from them on the technical side. A lot of my involvement is really on the project management side of it this time around, making sure that we're hitting our benchmarks, making sure it's getting out to the testing group that we've got, and really making sure everything is uh, locked in place for the eventual launch. It's 2024, and it's our seventh generation M. Well, a lot of the first things we did was really try to understand what parts of you know the geometry were things that we weren't necessarily keen on. Everything a little more subtle. People kind of really liked the round, shiny things, and so we wanted to play off that a little bit more. Overall, there was a hefty amount of simplification going on. So there's a lot of like subtlety to uh, finessing the overall flow of, of the device. From the machining geometry that we're working with, the coverage that the texturing has, the finishing process. I think like what we learned from, from last year from the M Plus was that not everyone is into kind of a really gnarly texture that if I can't see one in my hands before I decide to buy it, then I'm going off pictures and that's tough. We did a pretty aggressive texture on the M Plus. So we backed way off on that. To start taking things out of the program, see what we get, and start with kind of an interesting texture that we had on some stock. Had a bunch of different designs uh, for texture in place that kind of fell back into, like, okay, well, I kind of like this, kind of like that. What if we mesh these two together? Try this, try that. First one to go was actually the, the mouthpiece portion. This was kind of iteration one. Talk to Jason, like, Jason, let's get rid of the lip groove. Let's get rid of the machining up here. It just felt right to get rid of the lip groove. Really changes like the look, in and in, to me, in a positive way. So that just really gave the, I think the whole M7, a, kind of a fresh, updated, different look than anything else we've done before. As soon as we did it, we actually decided we really preferred the aesthetic look of it. And then that kind of expanded into the M7 XL version that we see, noting that it really looks good on, on either side of that. So I think that actually brought some cool aesthetic advantages. We started changing up the airport. You know, do we have two airports instead of one, 180 degrees apart from each other? With this iteration, there was an airport on the front and on the back. It seemed like a fun concept, but wasn't that well received. You know, one more hole to drill, one more hole to deeper, is it worth it? So then it's like, okay, we need to finish the other end of the stem. Just machine off a little bit of the texture, just give it a little bit of something, right? Not quite so plain and boring. Still similar uh, tip here, you can see a little color because it had to heat it up, check, see how it worked. And then change the direction of the airport because some of the feedback we we're getting at the time was, well, we want to have a little bit more modulation when we, you know, use the rocker and, and rotate the, the device on the airport so you can better adjust the airflow. Even this, people just didn't like the way that it looked. You know, they like the ability to kind of partially close the airport, partially leave it open, leave it open completely, you know, best of both worlds. It's kind of how I landed the offset lightning bolt, if you will, you know, makes it a little bit easier to change the airflow qualities to the customer's liking. Switched out the, the button on the back for this style rocker. 
a near final design, we can see that we've got the little holographic M there, we've got the airport, we've got this little detail here, we've got just the taper on the mouthpiece side. We changed up the rocker a little bit. You know, we can see there's just a, a little extra notch right here. Maybe we could do a little bit more. Memory serves me right here, you know, when we really focused on texture. It's probably down to two within a few days. I think the best feature by far is the take that we've had on texturing this time around. The, the texture and the pattern is actually the same all the way across these, but we changed up the, the depth of the pattern kind of incrementally. And there was a lot of R&D that went into that texturing, different options that we had. Nobody else is doing anything quite like it um, out there. You know, it's a process that we've kind of developed internally ourselves to be able to apply a texture. Very light texture, very heavy texture. Ended up going with one that you see for a variety of reasons. I think it's a very unique um, process that we do to uh, apply a texture to the stainless steel. And when people see this for the first time, especially with some bright lights that kind of reflect off it and you look at it. Being able to look at it in light and it has one effect and then you're kind of in a shaded area and it looks completely different, I think that's just cool. Working on the tip, started to, again, move more of the mass from the stem side up to the chamber side. We ditched the fins and moved the mass around, you know, with the M plus tip and kind of kept similar profile. We knew where we wanted that mass. We knew how we wanted it to flow air-wise. If you notice the geometry now, all the way from the serrations on the top, all the way down to where the tip meets the stem, it flows really nice. It was more important to me to kind of keep those aspects of it, of what works, and dress it up in a way that it fits the stem. Whether it's a standard cap or an armored cap, because we've got a little bit more room between the very opening of the chamber here and Right here, the cap doesn't grind on the chamber like some of the previous tip designs. It snaps on with a very nice, distinctive click. I just like to sit there and fidget with it, click it back and forth. I really like the clicks, and if anything, it's just kind of another further refinement of, it's not just the cap that clicks, the components click together because they've been engineered to fit together and to integrate together in a very, very, I think, nice and satisfying way. For the first time, we want to actually offer a mouthpiece with that unit. The mouthpiece end of it's really nice, especially when you flip the stem over. I think it just mates a lot better with it. Aesthetically, you know, folks that like to kind of reverse their units and put the tip on the mouthpiece end, you know, another good reason why we kind of dropped that dished out mouthpiece geometry. I know people are looking for an XL length, so why don't we create a mouthpiece? So. We started with a few mouthpiece concepts, and that's this one. You want the ability to kind of have it go either way and still look good, not like some kind of Frankenstein or something. When we look at all the various features, they look like they belong together. The design really stems from the woodwinds. Originally, you know, the snap-in condenser design. I'd probably done like a dozen different iterations of that mouthpiece in, in uh, tie and, and stainless. This is a stainless steel mouthpiece and condenser which you can get in the M7 as an M7 XL, but it's not exclusive to the M. And it looks good like on any other device that you, you, know, you can just buy just the, the mouthpiece and the condenser you know, as a kit. It is a modular component that is compatible with the vast majority of all of the stems that we've made over the years. By and large, a lot of the feedback that I've seen with my testers internally and externally is just overwhelmingly positive remarks. Probably the most noticeable response has been Oh, stainless mouthpiece and an XL version of an M? Oh, that's fantastic. We're always trying to do better, we're always trying to develop the process in-house of to make sure everyone's on the same page, make sure that the customer's expectations are met and sales and you know, all the things that have to go on. You know, we don't like changing things like last minute. We had the design of the mouthpiece aesthetically done. All right, we've all talked about it. We're gonna run with this. Production starts, you know, basically tomorrow. The feedback was coming in though that it sure would be nice if we could have a little bit of adjustment on the condenser. Part of the feedback that we were getting was just actually a, 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 a more restrictive airflow. But the huge note that we got from them was to add additional grooves or some way to regulate airflow control just for the user experience. I, I said to Jason, hey, you know, Jason, I know we got the groove that the condenser snaps into and holds in place really nice. Can we make this adjustable? Maybe we could just put another groove in there so that uh, 
we can have a couple positions. Here we are, you know, last minute, like literally right before I'm gonna start production, like in 10 minutes, I'm gonna start production. We just pump the brakes. About an hour later, he kind of walks in with a big grin on his face and just goes like this. and Just dropped it in George's hands, <laughs> like walked out. Now, I gotta take this over to the other people. I'm like, you gotta go take that, talk to the other guys, get their blessing, if you will. Should we do this? Here we are, it's past the 11th hour, but we haven't actually made any yet and we haven't uh, shared any of the messaging and the information with anyone else. And I hope it's worth it, and I hope that like everyone internally and whatnot doesn't get pissed. My initial reaction was, whoa, are we really gonna make a change this late in the game? It was really fun, because I didn't say anything other than, I've got a little problem. I just handed them the condenser in the mouthpiece, and they're looking at me, so what's the problem? I didn't say anything, until they go like, so they, had a little meeting. We had to take a look at it from um, the consumer's perspective as well, that I think adding it um, added a lot of extra value to the product. Sent me a message a little bit later in the day, said, yep, we're gonna go with that. I think we did the right thing. You know, the feedback you got was, hey, run with that, awesome. So taking their advice, we went ahead and made those changes um, right before we went into production, but we're super stoked with the result. People are loving it. He fired up the machine, we started making multi-position M7 melt pieces. And I'm glad we did. It just changed the entire thing. It changes the entire experience. We've always tried to have very prominent machinery, different Easter eggs kind of contained within it, but I think the simplicity of the device overall, especially with that gemstone style mouthpiece, it's one of my favorite looking M's to date. We've been getting some really great feedback. You know, people are really enjoying the ability to have an XL version of an M. Um, that's been very well received. From what I can tell and from the feedback that I'm aware of from you know, both people in the company and you know, others that we've shown this to, it's been very, very positive. You know, we kind of gave everybody everything that I think they were looking for. For the people that have tried it and used it, they're really happy with how well this new tip extracts. The tip is designed to actually hold more heat. So the wall thicknesses on the M7 tip are thicker than in past versions of the M. So it does retain that heat a little bit better. It helps with the fully extracting your material. Taking a lot of the aspects of the M Plus that people were really keen on, change the look of it as that they just weren't so happy about coming out with a product that really hits all the benchmarks. I firmly believe, and I think you will too, that the M7 is our most refined M yet.